It's time for Real Talk. Movies. Everyone loves them. And opinions. Everyone has them. But your opinion is the one that matters. Real Talk allows you to become the film critic. So let's see if we agree on a film or do we agree to disagree. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Daily Journal's Real Talk. I'm Pamela Powell. The tall tale and book, In the Heart of the Sea, that inspired Herman Melville to write Moby Dick is now a Ron Howard film starring Chris Hemsworth. This is an exhilaratingly horrific adventure film about survival and heart. Here to talk with me about the film is David Jarecki. David, thanks for joining us today. Glad to be here. Now, tell me a little bit. I'm not quite sure whether or not we're going to agree or disagree on recommending In the Heart of the Sea. Can you tell me what your overall impressions are of the film? Overall, it was well-paced, and I, and I thought the special effects were great, but I was really bothered by the lack of character development. The movie starts off with a survivor of the shipping vessel, the Essex. He starts telling Herm the Herman Melville character the story of what happened. And he starts off the narration by saying that it's the, the tale of uh, two people, the captain and the first mate. And then I, thought, I kept thinking back to that as the movie went on. And when it was over, I really didn't feel like it was a tale of the two people. I didn't feel that the chemistry between the two actors, Benjamin Walker and Chris Hemsworth, was really there. No, it was bad seamanship. And blaming misfortune is just plain weakness. Damn your impertinence. Hemsworth and Walker, they seem to be such polar opposites, not just physically, but in their whole demeanor. I think the chemistry that I saw was just that antagonistic type of relationship. They showed how the Hemsworth character was obsessed with the whale. I thought they could have done more to put more meat on that. <laughs> And speaking of the meat of the subject, it was unbelievably gruesome and disturbing. I'm an animal lover, and I generally don't watch movies that have any kind of cruelty. And granted, I'm sure this is all CGI and fake stuff, but it felt really real. For that part of the movie, was like a tutorial on how they scavenged the whales as disgusting and cruel as it was. It was interesting how they had it strapped next to the boat, and the way they dove in to get the oil from the, the whale was something I'd never, never seen or thought of. I am not a 3D fan and this kind of hammered home the fact that I'm not a 3D fan. And I thought it kind of detracted from several of the scenes where there was just supposed to be some, some conversation and some just drama. I thought it took away from that. What did you think? Yes, it took away from the dramatic parts, but also for the cinematography. As beautiful as some of those shots were when they showed the big ocean and, when, and the boats and through the, in the beginning part when they went through the storm were real interesting, but I would rather have seen the cinematographer's flat vision of those um, scenes. So tell me, I, I am recommending the film to see it in 2D. And what are your thoughts? Are we agreeing on recommending this film? Yeah, I would only recommend it as a time killer. Like, it was well-paced. I kept thinking back to the Wolfgang Peterson film from 2000, The Perfect Storm. The characters were more developed, and when uh, tragedy happened to the boat, it had more of an impact. And I thought it was done a lot better in that movie. Okay, very good. Well, I guess we're going to semi-agree to semi-disagree. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> David, thank you so much for joining us on today's Real Talk. Thank you. That's it for another Real Talk. Be sure to join us next week when we have a roundtable discussion about Star Wars, The Force Awakens. And David, that's a wrap.